Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, so merging health and urbanization. Uh, 1950, 30% of the world's population lived in urban centers. Uh, growth saw uh, this number increase by 50% by 2008, and today this trend shows no sign of slowing. During the last decade, the number of people living in cities exceeded the number living in rural areas for the first time in human history. For the foreseeable future, most human lives will be urban ones. Yet, if anything, these figures underestimate the influence of the global urban transition on humanity and the planet. While urban areas occupy just 3% of land surface, they are responsible for perhaps three quarters of carbon emission and use of natural resources. The pace and scale of urbanization is now most rapid in low and middle income countries. I'd like to start with a case study, which might sound familiar. A grouping of serious pathologies reported in a restricted geographic area, and soon these are, uh, this turned to deaths. Uh, illness and deaths are interpreted to be consequences of infectious states, but only two were infected through direct human-human contact. And in these few cases, the agent was transmitted by intimate daily contact between family members. Thus, there were no cases of human-human transmission on the disease through casual contact, and the feared pandemic never emerged. Nevertheless, a threat of uh, epidemic remains despite the fact that there appear to be few grounded and actionable policies to mitigate this risk. Because of the potentially severe consequences of even a low risk scenario, this very real threat has generated extensive debate and concern among scholars, officials, and the general public about how to deal with the situation. One of the primary limitations in developing steps to mitigate the risk of further outbreaks is a less lack of analysis of the disease origins. I emphasize origins and not etiology because the causative agent was well known. Uh, in the brackets, there is a relationship between urbanization and outbreaks. Expanding fronts of human settlements, intensified agriculture, conversion of land use for, from rural to urban, industrial and societal cultural changes from government stability to family structure can increase the risk of such emerging infectious diseases. And there was a clear, it was clear that areas surrounding the urban centers were disproportionately affected by outbreaks but the investigation uh, specifies precisely the relationship between urbanization and outbreaks. Before comments, could you specify the geographical area, country, period, and agents and disease names? Does it sound familiar to something that happened just recently? Okay, it's about Southeast Asia, May 21st, 2005. Uh, at least uh, 52 people have died of the uh, H5N1 version of avian influenza. 36 in Vietnam, Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh cities, 12 in Thailand, 4 in Cambodia. The presentation is based on open source data on avian influenza 2004-2005 in the Vietnam census of population and housing. So, let us focus on health. Cities are the main drivers of national development and offer access to a wide uh, array of goods and services, including health, education, and social and cultural opportunities. It is noted that the focus on economy or environment <coughs> risks excluding health and well-being from the benefits of sustainable development in cities. The converse is not true. A focus on health for current and future generations nearly always encompasses sustainable, inclusive, and productive economic and environmental goals, particularly in cities where economy, environment, and well-being are fundamentally interwined. 
what about health and other sectors? Many of the key determinants of health and disease, as well as the solutions, lie in reality outside the direct control of the health sector. In sectors concerned with environment, water and sanitation, agriculture, education, employment, urban and rural livelihoods, trade, tourism, etc., etc. Much progress has been made in forging closer links between health and other sectors, particularly through local and national intersectorial health and development plans and through increased use of planning tools such as health impact assessment procedures, integrated monitoring and surveillance system, and improved health information system and indicators. What about urban health? Urban health is traditionally neglected in policy making, makings. Risks associated with accelerating urbanization, especially in low and middle income countries, pose a major global challenge. What are the possible solutions? Ensuring adequate and reliable health-related data, intersectorial coordination, sharing of successful experiences, best practices models, reducing the financial burdens on health care through improved financing techniques, strengthening public-private partnerships, strengthening public health care facilities. Uh, do we have an integrated plan for sustainable urban development? The structural funds regulation for period 2007-2013 do not include a definition of or specific requirements for an integrated plan for sustainable urban development. Consequently, this should be defined by member states and managing authorities, taking account of Article 8 of Regulation uh, 1080-2006 slash and the urban, a specific urban, administrative, and legal context of each region. And uh, a example of what should be done uh, a good example is the public-private partnerships, the PPPs. What about sustainable health systems visions? A diverse group of health system leaders across five countries were asked to describe their ideal health system in uh, 2040. Their visions are remarkable in their consistency. The preferred health system of the future is strikingly different from the national healthcare system of today with empowered patients, more diverse delivery models, new roles and stakeholders, incentives and norms. Creating a financially sustainable health system requires a major reorientation towards value and outcomes, the involvement of a broader set of stakeholders, as public as well as private, in a more effective governance structure and greater engagement and responsibility of patients and citizens. Uh, which could be the context? An answer could lie in health and green infrastructure. Green infrastructure is the integration of nature and ecosystems in cities, towns, and regions to generate multiple benefits such as clean air, better stormwater management, public health. Um, I would end with two examples of good practices uh, which one, uh, uh, the first is the green infrastructure in Toronto, Canada, uh, known as a city within a park with 12% of its surface devoted to green space and about 1,500 parks, 187 kilometers of bike paths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, actually, rates of diabetes in Toronto have been dramatically reduced in areas with parks and other uh, spaces due to physical activities. The second example, LA, an ambitious restructuring of its health care system, uh, attempting to reduce its traditional emphasis on ERs, emergency rooms, and inpatient care by building an integrated system of community-based uh, primary specialty and preventive uh, care, moving from a large de decentralized hospital-based system to an integrated and well-coordinated system of community-based uh, care. I would just end by the three key strategies that they followed. Expanding access to ambulatory care services, reducing the inappropriate use of 
ERs for primary care and building links across public health, primary care, and specialty care providers. To be continued. Thank you.